Hey everyone, welcome back to Objective Reviews. My name is Nick and in this video we are going to be taking a overview of macOS Catalina, that is macOS 10.15 and the first developer beta is out and I have it running on my MacBook. So let's get into a very quick overview and I want to start off with that sexy new wallpaper that they have and yes this is a dynamic wallpaper and we can have it set to change as per the time of the day or have a dark still or a light still and you can set that from the wallpaper's preferences. As usual no new screensavers which is always a bummer. I would really really love to see new screensavers Apple uh, especially if you can get the uh, Apple TV screensavers on Mac OS that would be epic because the aerial screensaver uh, thing project that is on GitHub hasn't been working out very well for me so I would really love a first party solution for that. My second favorite feature from Mac OS Catalina has got to be Sidecar. Now I also have iPad OS 13 running on my iPad Pro and Sidecar is a beautiful addition to Mac OS Catalina however it, there are two catches here. You cannot set a manual color profile on the iPad display, the AirPlay mirror display as it shows up. Uh, you're limited to the HD 709 color profile and you cannot take use of ProMotion display. So no 120 FPS, no 120 Hz on the iPad Pro display. But this is the first beta on both uh, Mac OS Catalina and iPad OS 13. So I hope this changes in the future but Sidecar is pretty pretty epic and I absolutely love it. Next up is, uh, well obviously everyone's been talking about this, uh, the new music, podcasts and TV apps. Now TV or movies and from these three they have been redesigned, they all have been decoupled from iTunes and now when you plug in your iPhone or your iPad into your Mac it no longer brings up iTunes. You can view all of this in the finder directly. So none of that, no iTunes for syncing data or backing up your devices to your Mac. Coming back to uh, the music app, the music app looks the same but just that it's a different app now. Uh, podcasts, the same but it's a different app now and it syncs more reliably with the iOS counterparts and the iPad counterparts. The TV app is very similar to uh, the TV app on iOS. Now across all of these three, Apple released Project Catalyst earlier known as Marzipan and what that brings is iPad apps onto macOS, onto macOS Catalina and this is a brilliant brilliant addition especially for developers like myself who can take our iPad apps and bring them to macOS without writing a lot more code. So we do have to make some changes here and there to make sure that everything works well on macOS as well but it's not as huge as rewriting an entire app altogether. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And the podcast app is a great example of that. Similarly, voice memos and the news app are also going to be running on uh, Project Catalyst, bringing their iPad apps onto macOS. The Reminders app has also been redesigned to match the iOS and iPadOS counterparts. And it actually looks useful now and it actually looks a lot better than the cards and list UI that you had going earlier and it has a it is a lot more smarter now and it can automatically detect when you input dates and time in there and automatically assign it to that reminder. Uh, if you remember Fantastical does something very similar. Well if you haven't watched that video I'll link it right here. You can go check it out. So it is very similar to what Fantastical does however not as powerful as that but a great step in the right direction. Maybe we'll see by the end, by the time the GM comes, I'll see if this can replace things for me because if it can, sharing these lists has been uh, one of the things holding me back from moving away from things. And now that reminders on macOS and iOS and iPadOS is actually becoming useful, I may consider that. So we'll figure it out and we'll find out by the time the GM hits. One of the best parts for me personally about Mac OS Catalina is that it will be released alongside the new uh, Mac Pro, the customizable one that Apple released and uh, I don't want to talk too much about it because that thing is not targeted at me so I don't even want to form an opinion about it because then the price and this and that and it's, it's a whole mess so I don't want to talk about it too much. 
However, that brings Radeon 7 support, or as Apple is calling it, Vega 2 support. What that will ultimately enable me to do is get a Radeon 7 GPU in my Hackintosh uh, without having to install a helper card along with it. I won't be selling my RX 580 though. I'll get an eGPU enclosure and use it with my MacBook Pro for all my photo editing and all of that stuff when I'm using the MacBook Pro for that. So that'll be pretty cool. And I should be also, uh, I think I should be able to edit videos on that as well. Although this is only a dual core MacBook Pro. Yeah, that's, I know that sucks. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, I'll have, uh, I'll try to get a more in-depth review of macOS Catalina by the time it releases. Hopefully, a day before it releases, I'll have my review up and ready, most probably broken down into various parts, depending on the sections. That is the plan for macOS Catalina, iPadOS 13, and iOS 13 this year. So, if everything goes well, September is going to be loaded with videos. All right, I'll see you on the objective stream later on Friday. Have a good one. Cheers.